When I was a student, I was uh, very opportunistic when it came to actually go into lectures. The course is uh, a classic Oud Max course with a twist, if you might say so. So you have the standard uh, lectures that goes on throughout the semester. But I think the one big difference with my course is that I have uh, a very extensive uh, bulk of theory early on in the course. Uh, and then they get their first home exam, uh, actually the first week of uh, February. So then they get a, a, a real life uh, question that they have one week to, to analyze uh, in groups. And that's connected to uh, a guest from the, uh, from the business life. Uh, and then uh, they have another home exam three weeks uh, after this. So when we're uh, done with February, then the students have actually covered around 70-80% of the scholarly content of the course. And they've also conducted two home exams that have uh, forced them to, to apply this to a real-world setting pretty early on. A good mantra is to, uh, that this course should uh, enable the students to be better at reading Dagens Næringsliv, uh, for example. But I think two-hour uh, monologue is a long time and breaking it up into to different ways of uh, uh, working with many cases, having uh, guests that we can have dialogues uh, with. Uh, I've used a company where the students, uh, in, by asking questions, try to gather information so they can analyze the secret source of this uh, company and, and so forth. And I think having them um, thinking a bit harder on how you can do this alternative ways of telling the story can also make a half an hour or 45 minutes traditional lecture more fun because it puts all these more untraditional things into, in, into context. So I have several different types of uh, guest lectures and I think the common denominator is that none of them resembles the normal traditional guest lecture. So the biggest ones are probably the guest lectures that are connected to the home exams. So the students, they get their home exams on say a Monday uh, and then on the Tuesday and uh, they get a guest lecture from one of the uh, or the company that this uh, home exam question is uh, tailored uh, around and then uh, this exam this lecture then becomes part of the information gathering from the students when they are going to write their uh, their uh, assignment so that's one thing they have some incentives to actually be there to, to hear what's being said but then I uh, use the first 40, uh, 45 minutes for the, the guest to talk about this problem. So not so much talk about, give a company presentation, but talk about this decision problems, uh, problem that they are facing. And then the entire second hour of uh, the lecture is questions from the students. Uh, so this was very daunting when I did it the first time because usually getting students to, to say something in Oudmox is, is very difficult. But I've done this now for, for eight times and then I always need to stop the questions uh, because time has uh, run up. And then I run around uh, uh, with a microphone in uh, the auditorium myself and students raise their hand to, to get the word and then they ask questions that are relevant for uh, the scope of their specific uh, assignments. So that works uh, very well. So I try to construct home exams and cases that forces them to make a lot of independent choices and decisions to actually get a feel of how it is to, to analyze or, or conduct a strategic analysis in real life. So I try to make the home exams part of the learning more than they are just a way to assess the students. So the students, they get a very difficult question in a way that, uh, as I mentioned, forces them to take a lot of independent uh, decisions and, uh, and choices. Uh, and then when they submit it uh, after a week, uh, they get a pass or a fail uh, grade. To pass, you need to have the quality of your work as we would have given a C in a normal uh, exam. And then in parallel to this uh, pass or fail grade, they also get an extensive uh, review report uh, written by uh, some master students that are my student assistants. If we put everything online and make courses, then suddenly we compete with the whole world on, on having videos. Uh, but the other way of thinking of this is to basically uh, focus more on the, the local advantages that we, uh, we have. So we are uh, located in a, 
in a small country where the distances from NHH to almost any person uh, working in an interesting company in Norway is very short, uh, which allows us to, to include uh, guests, uh, have assignments that are directly related to companies, have, have guests that actually can be part of these uh, experimentations in, uh, in class and making everything lively and fun and get relevant examples for, for the students. I think that's something we should do more of uh, instead of uh, only focusing on putting things online. So if we are going to have a video uh, offering, at least in my course, this of course differs from the type of course, but I think in my course that has a different function than the lectures uh, and that's fine. So to give them a theoretical uh, uh, overview or go through some uh, theory where the students can pause and uh, and play whenever they want, that, that's fine. But I think if we're going to continue having lectures at all, I think they should have a different role, which is basically to engage, get people interesting, uh, open their uh, minds and uh, horizons and, uh, and see how this knowledge can actually be used to, to take better decisions, to have a better understanding of a certain situation and, uh, and so forth. I don't record my, uh, my lectures and I think the two main points of uh, not doing so is the first one is that I, I want to make the lectures so good that students actually uh, they want to be there of their own uh, free will uh, and also that it's important for uh, the atmosphere in the lecture and also uh, when I have interactions that the students are actually in the, in the room and interaction contributes to making this into an interesting uh, interesting uh, lecture. So as a substitute for not recording, I have made like shorter versions of my lectures where I just uh, uh, have screencasts where I talk over my, my slides. But I think the lecture should be something that takes place uh, in this room. And also the course, we try to teach them to, to take decisions and know that uh, if you choose something, that usually means that you have to choose away something else. So, uh, and I think and going to a lecture should be also be some sort of a similar decision where you, if you don't go to a lecture, then you, you miss out or something. It doesn't necessarily matter, but it could matter. Every semester when you're done, you think about all the things that worked and uh, the things that didn't uh, work. And I think the biggest learning from this uh, semester is I've been experimenting a lot with having guests as part of traditional lectures in, uh, in different ways where I pretend to be Skavlan in different uh, formats, uh, interviewing these guests or having a dialogue with them and trying to engage the audience in, uh, in different ways and so forth. And that's been like ad hoc experimentation with local uh, firms or uh, even at a rock store and a model uh, as one of my guests in, uh, in two lectures. Uh, so uh, uh, so that, that was experiments. Uh, but now when you get the student feedback and when you talk to the students, uh, this way of, of using guests that turn out to be seems to be quite, uh, uh, quite well received. So uh, that's something in retrospect I wish I had thought more heavily uh, about in the beginning to actually make it a, uh, a part of uh, more of the lectures and also think perhaps harder in advance on, on how I can use it in, in the lectures more than just having this ad hoc experimentation that uh, I did a lot uh, this semester. I would like to make the lectures even more untraditional in the sense that we include more, more guests, try to go away from the, the standard monologue uh, format. Uh, but I think some part of this uh, traditional big uh, audience uh, lecturing will always be in this uh, course because I think that's one good aspect of uh, a good uh, Odmox lecture is that it engages someone, it gets people interested in a subject. They won't necessarily remember everything that's said, but if they go out there and think that this is very interesting, or something I want to learn more about, then they get some stories in the back of their head that they can uh, help them read for the exam. That's very uh, valuable. So I think now we have, we pay more attention to the students, uh, how we can engage them, and also the, the competition for the students' time have also uh, intensified in the, in the sense that they have uh, videos online that they can look at. They uh, have uh, for the courses that recorded to create your own uh, substitute for this. So we 
we have uh, basically been forced to, to focus more on the students and I think that's uh, a very good thing.